Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we will solve the past paper uh, of A level biology 9700. And this is the paper uh, which was appeared in the Mars 2023. And this is the question paper number 12. So let's start. The photomicrograph shows the cell from a human blood smear. And uh, this is the lens which is this was shown to the photomicrograph. The which calculation shows a correct method to calculate the actual diameter of the neutrophil shown in the photomicrograph in the micrometers. So as we all know that magnification is equals to image by actual length. So we have to find out the actual length. So formula goes image by magnification means the image which we which is a PQ. PQ in millimeter will go there and magnification will goes here and as we have to find out the um, answer in micrometer so we will divide that particular so we have to do what we have to do we have to multiply this with the thousand and then it will be converted into the micrometer so but uh, we find out that option number a here is the right answer a student calibrated an eyepiece reticule uh, using a stage micrometer. As we know that the e uh, stage micrometer e division is 0.01 millimeter. Because we know that 0, uh, 0 0.1 meter is the one distance, right? One division from, for example, this is number 1 to 10. This is 0 0.1 millimeter distance. And each small division, for example, this particular small division will be 0 0.01 millimeter here, right? So, with a 10x magnification objective lens, 10 IPS reticule units matched with the 10 divisions of the stage micrometer. The same microscope was used with a 40x instead of the 10x magnification objective lens to measure the diameter of an alveolus. The diameter of the alveolus was found to be 96 IPS reticule units. The IPS lens was not changed. Then I have to find out what is the best estimate for the diameter of the alveolus. Whenever we find out and we you have a, a particular microscope, then we have to match that particular IP secreticular units with that of the um, how much it magnifies with the objective lens. So it comes out to be 240 micrometer. Which statement are correct for the chloroplast and also for the mitochondria? These are the statements we have to find out which are correct for both chloroplast and mitochondria. They contain 80S ribosome? No, they contain 70S ribosome instead. So they can translate their, uh, transcribe their circular DNA? Yes, they can. They can translate their messenger RNA? Yes, they are enclosed by the double membranes. Yes. So we can find out that 2, 3 and 4 points are right. So option number C here is the right answer. The electron micrograph shows some cells from a root. Uh, which cell structure is not really found in the in the cells from a root? A here shows the nucleus. Nucleus. It is always present. Nucleol nucleolus. It is the nucleolus. And B is the nucleus. It is always present. C is the cell membrane. It is always present here. And the B is the something which is different from the other root cells. So we can say that option number B is the right answer. Dialysis tubing is an artificial partially permeable membrane with a pore size of approximately 2.5 nanometer. Glucose molecules have a diameter of about 1.5 nanometer and can pass through the pores in the membranes. Right? Because they are smaller than the diameter of the dialysis tube, so they can pass through it. Which else can pass through the pores, bacteria, hemoglobin, ribosomes or fructose? As we know that bacteria, when we will compare the sizes of all these, then we find out that fructose has that much size which can pass through the 2.5 nanometer diameter membrane. So we can say that option number B, B here is the right answer. What is present in all viruses? Ribose, deoxyribose, adenine and thiamine. Adenine is always present in all viruses because all viruses have DNA and the DNA have adenine so we can say it is present in all viruses. 
to estimate the concentration of the glucose in an unknown solution equal volumes of the range of the non concentration of the glucose were mixed with the same volume of the benedict solution then they were placed in a water bath at 90 degrees centigrade for 3 minutes we have to find out the unknown solution concentration and the unknown solution was then treated with the same way as the that particular of the non solution non concentration solutions and the color of the known and the unknown solutions were compared what is the independent variable in this procedure as we can see the final color of the solution it is concentration of the glucose is independent because it does not depend upon the anything the other variables depend are dependent upon the concentration of the glucose for example the final color of the solution is dependent upon the concentration of the glucose so it rolls out of the so temperature of the water bath it is also dependent upon the uh, how much quantity we are using in our uh, experiment volume of the glucose solutions it is not important important is the concentration of the glucose which is act as a independent variable so we can say that option number a here is the right answer which statements are correct for the mylose and the mylopectin they are carbohydrate molecules yes they are they are formed by the condensation reactions yes they are the linear molecules no they are branched molecules they are branched they contain alpha 14 glycosidic bonds yes they contain so we can say that 1 2 and 4 points uh, so 1 uh, 2 and 4 points are uh, right one so option number b here is the right answer Which statement is the correct comparison between the saturated triglyceride molecule and the unsaturated triglyceride molecule approximately of the same molecular mass? So we can we have to read out all the options and find out the correct one. Unsaturated triglycerides has more double bonds and a fewer hydrogen atoms than the saturated triglycerides. We find out the correct, but we have to check other options as well. Fewer tri fewer double bonds than the fewer hydrogen atoms. No, they have the more double bonds. The more unsaturated the triglyceride will be, it has the more double bonds, and the fewer hydrogen atoms will be present in them. So, all the other options are incorrect. So, option number A is the right answer. The diagram represents a molecule from a cell surface membrane. Which description of one of the labels is correct? A shows fatty acids at the hydrophilic end of the molecule. No, it is not the hydrophilic end. It is just seeing the uh, tail of that particular cell surface membrane, which is made up of the lipid molecules. The hydrophobic end of the triglyceride molecule B shows hydrophobic end of the triglyceride molecules. No, it does not show hydrophobic end of the glycerol molecule. C shows hydrophobic end of the glycerol molecule. no it it does not show it shows the uh, somehow the bond between the phosphodiester and the phosphate molecules and that of the proteins so it rules out phosphate group at the hydrophobic d shows the phosphate group at the hydrophilic end of the molecule yes this is the phosphate group small one is the phosphate group which is present at the hydrophilic end of the molecule so we can say that option number d here is the right answer which row correctly shows the level of the protein structure that can be had to get by each each type of the interaction hydrogen bonds we have to find out the hydrogen bonds are present in which particular structure primary structure do not have any hydrogen bonds but it can be present in secondary and the tertiary structures Hydrophobic interactions are present in only in the tertiary structures, and covalent bonds are present in both the primary and the tertiary structures. But the secondary structures mostly contains the uh, hydrogen bonds. So we have to find out the right option, and we say that option number C here is the right one. Which molecule contains at least three double bonds? Saturated triglycerides, collagen, and hemoglobin. When we Uh, we have to look at their structures then we find out all the three have 
three double bonds at least three double bonds they can have more than three double bonds as well but they have at least three bonds as well so option number d here is the right answer which which diagram correctly shows the hydrogen bonding between the two water molecules here the positive and negative charges are this this dotted line is showing the hydrogen bonding right so we can say here there is a plus and negative charge but in the option number b there is the partial positive and partial negative charge let's take other one the hydrogen have negative charge and so we can say that in the each hydrogen bonding the hydrogen molecule contains a partial positive charge and the oxygen molecule always contains a partial negative charge so we can say that option number b here is the right answer they do not always contain uh, the whole charges they just contain the partial positive or partial negative charges because hydrogen bonding is not uh, permanent it is just for the some time which statement describes an example of the extracellular enzyme amylase in the saliva is an enzyme that causes that catalyzes the breakdown of the starch in the mouth yes carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme that helps in the transport of the carbon dioxide gas in the blood this is a function which carries out in the particular inside the cell this is a in intracellular function this can be extracellular that is the mouth amylase is released in the mouth and the uh, uh, starch molecules present in the food are digested here and dna polymerase is an enzyme that helps to build the dna molecule from the nucleotides this is this also occurs inside the cell this is intracellular process and RNA polymerase is an enzyme involved in the process of the gene transcription. This is also occurs inside the cell. So we can say that uh, the extracellular enzyme here is the amylase. So option number A here is the right answer. Which row is correct for the enzymes that catalyzes the reactions using the lock and key hypothesis? So whenever we discuss the lock and key hypothesis, we should know that whenever a lock and key. So a particular enzyme have to be uh, attached with the substrate so that it cannot be detached. So let's take the options given here. Whenever the effect of the enzyme of the activation energy of the reaction being catalyzed, whenever a reaction being catalyzed, if we will add enzyme in that then exam will lower the activation energy of that reaction and then will faster the rate of the reaction so the point one is the correct here and the shape of the active site in the comparison to the substrate it changes to become complementary as the enzyme substrate complex forms it changes to become complementary mm. as the enzyme substrate complex forms yes it is but it is uh, let's take the other options as well so complement it lawyers activation energy is it right complementary before during and after the formation of them the shape of the active site remains complementary whether the enzyme substrate complex is formed or uh, before or after and during the, this formation so we find out option number b here is the right answer a scientist investigated the rate of the breakdown of the hydrogen peroxide Four experiments were carried out using the different mixtures, substrate only, substrate plus enzyme, substrate plus enzyme plus competitive inhibitor and some substrate plus enzyme plus non-competitive inhibitor. One, one, two, three and four. So we have to find out the correct option. The results are sketched in the graph. Which row shows the correct lines for the two of the experimental mixtures? Line one shows when we have only substrate. No, it does not shows. This it shows us some kind of reaction which is 
uh, involve the enzymes, right? Uh, if there is only substrate, then the reaction cannot be like this. So substrate plus enzyme plus competitive inhibitor. True line, the second line does not show us this because if there is a competitive inhibitor, then the rate of the enzyme uh, enzyme uh, reaction will not be such high as that shown in that particular tube. So it rules out. The B shows four line shows the substrate only. Yes, whenever we have only substrate in the mixture, then there will be the no increase in that particular uh, rate of the reaction. It will be give a steady line as we can see here so because there are no enzymes so there will be the no reaction there will be only substrate present in that particular so substrate plus enzyme plus a competitive inhibitor shows the second line yes it can be if we have a particular substrate and an enzyme and a competitive inhibitor then it will then some of the enzymes will get attached to the substrate and some other will attach with the competitive inhibitor and they will increase the rate of the reaction to a further to a some extent then it will goes and steady uh, state rate so we can say that the option number b here is the right answer which of these substances can pass through directly through the cell surface membranes without a carrier protein or a channel protein calcium ions need a carrier protein Carbon dioxide gas does not require any protein, they can pass as it is. Glucose molecules also need protein. So we can say that option number D here is the right answer. What happens to the surface area to the volume ratio of a cube when the length of the each side is doubled? Here we can say it is a cube. When we will double each side, then the surface area will increase but volume will remain same. So we can say that surface area to volume ratio will become half. Which events are part of the mitotic cell cycle? Interphase, telophase and cytokinesis. Both all are the parts of the mitotic cell cycle. So option number A is the right answer. The estimated total number of the red blood cells in the human body is 2.5 into 10 to 10 to the power 13. It is estimated that each day 2.5 into 10 to 10 to the power 11 red blood cells are removed from the circulation and are replaced by the stem cells. What percentage of the total number of the red blood cells are replaced each day? As we can say that the, uh, the actual, the lowest here is the 2.5 into 10 to 10 to the power 11 and the actual is 2.5 entertain 10 raised to the power 13 multiply with 100 and we can find out that it comes out to be one person so we can say that the total number of the red blood cells which are replaced each day is one person meet you in the next lecture till then Allah Hafiz and stay tuned